गुड इवनिंग एवरीबॉडी नमस्कार अंडर द बैनर ऑफ एन विजनिंग टुमारो द स्टार एक्स शो एंड अ चांस टू मीट द यंगस्टर्स द नेक्स्ट जनरेशन टुडे आई फील माय सेल्फ फॉर्च्यूनेट एंड प्रिविलेज्ड आई डिड माय इंजीनियरिंग वे बैक इन 1991 and in the codes of my engineering i always wanted to be a upsc officer that is an ias officer clearing my public services but you might have heard the name of pramukh swami maharaj and he asked me to become a saint so after finishing my engineering in 1991 i took diksha during the inauguration of akshardham at gandhinagar and that was because of one single reason that i saw the personal life of pramukh swami maharaj from very close quarters the purity of his personal life his selfless zeal for society his profound devotion towards god basically the topic which i want to talk about and enlighten for this envisioning tomorrow thing is a lifestyle that i have designed with the experiences of all my readings all my travels of all my interactions with people i have read more than about 400 biographies and autobiographies in my life from nelson mandela to abraham lincoln to mahatma gandhi to sachin tendulkar to winston churchill everybody i have interacted personally with more than 500 national international speakers and personalities traveling more than 20 countries and more than 50 cities in those countries i have been a speaker in more than 1000 national international seminars across the globe and perhaps you will be surprised to know that i have personally visited more than 25000 homes and families in more than 20 countries of the world and sat with those families personally in traveling across more than 20 countries and more than 50 cities of those countries i have personally sat for an hour at least with 25000 families across caste creed color nationality so i want to share my experience of my reading my travel my interactions with people and by that for a better tomorrow of the society i have designed a lifestyle that could suit everybody of all ages and that could not just be beneficial in all walks of life but could lift you in all walks of life for all that i personally went deep into the life and works of pramukh swami maharaj because i felt that he achieved everything in life of all the 400 biographies and autobiographies that i have read i went deep into the life of pramukh swami maharaj and i personally read and understood more than 200 2000 incidents of his life he has not only built 13000 temples all over the world he has built more than 100 hospitals schools hospitals and colleges He has initiated more than 1200 saints like us and out of them more than 750 of them are graduates post graduates chartered accountants doctors and engineers Out of those 750 more than 150 of them are born american and british citizens about more than 50 of them are Harvard Stanford Carnegie Mellon CL graduates He traveled to more than 18000 villages in 60 countries he personally read and answered more than 7.5 lakh letters that people used to write to him for their personal family or professional issues he personally met more than 3.5 lakh families visiting their homes so i went deep into his life and i could match the readings that the travels that and the interactions that i did in my life along with the experiences of pramukh swami's life and i came to a conclusion and i designed a lifestyle which i normally teach and preach in my seminars and conferences and that is i teach 8 plus 8 plus 8 system envisioning tomorrow you need a good lifestyle and a good lifestyle a healthy lifestyle a nurtured lifestyle a well thought lifestyle a satisfied lifestyle 
by each and every citizen upon this earth is a perfect tomorrow for everybody. So of the 24 hours that you have, it should be well distributed into 8 plus 8 plus 8 system. First 8 hours is your honest ethical hard work in whichever profession you are. Second 8 hours is a good sleep and rest. And third 8 hours are very important. If you can live it well, you win your life. And if you don't live it well, there is a possibility that you lose your life. In that third 8 hours, out of my experiences, I have designed that the third 8 hours of the day should be well distributed into 3F, 3H, and 3S. 3F is your family, friends, faith. 3H is your health, hygiene, and hobby. And 3S is your soul, service, and smile. If you can well distribute the third eight hours, of course, into fragments, into these nine departments, it is a perfect, well-balanced lifestyle. And you will not invite any complaints from any quarters of your life. Be it your house, be it your office, be it your friend circle, everywhere from all the quarters. On the contrary, you will receive appreciations. So this 8 plus 8 plus 8 system I have designed. Again, to repeat the last 8 hours, 3F is your family, friends, and faith. 3H is your health, hygiene, and hobby. And 3S is your soul, service, and smile. If you can well distribute the third eight hours of the day, of course, into fragments, into this nine departments, it is a life well lived. You will save yourself from many physical diseases, you will save yourself from many types of mental illnesses and you will enjoy a good emotional stability in life. With the design of this principle, I have met many people, I have read many things, wrote many things about it. And this is a fact of life. This I am sharing is the essence of more than 400 biographies and autobiographies of these great personalities. In short, it's a success mantra. At any stage in life, at, in any field of your life, or at any times of your life. And for that, for visioning a better tomorrow, Our Guru Pramukh Swami Maharaj, the creator of Akshardham, many of you might have visited, just raise your hands, you have been to Akshardham at Delhi or Gandhi Nagar? Like most of you? From his readings and his travels and his interactions with people, because he met more than 20 million people personally. For a better tomorrow, for every citizen, for every existence upon this earth, he devised the concept, which is according to this 8 plus 8 plus 8 system. And that concept is, we call it in our organization, the Gar Sabha. Where all the family members, they come together at least twice in a week. You come together every day, perhaps for your TV shows, perhaps for your dinner, it's fine. But you must always, as put forward in this particular aspect of life, that twice a week you come together for spiritual sessions. A 20-minute spiritual session in all the families and we can envision a peaceful tomorrow. How I say? I'll give you the scientific and the logical proof to it. Recently, the University of uh, Miami and an organization called Child Trans, the CEO of which is Mr. Philip Fletcher, they had a joint survey in more than 110 countries of the world across five continents, so spanning over eight years, and they personally, the volunteers interacted with more than about 100,000 families. And the principal question of the survey was, 
that what is the difference between two families, one family doing some religious rites and rituals every day for a few minutes or at least twice a week and those families who are perhaps non-believers and they don't do any of these religious activities in the house. After eight hours of, oh, sorry, after eight years of survey, in more than 100,000 families across caste, creed, color, religion, nationality, the final conclusion report says that the faithful families has n number of advantages over atheist families, and those families who conduct religious rites and rituals every day, the first point they found out in the survey was that the level of acceptance among the family members of believer family and performing family were found to be much better than the level of acceptance among non-believer families. Isn't this a big advantage? Yes, yes or no? Yes. The second aspect they put forward, the research, that the level of tolerance among the believer family members was found to be much better than the level of tolerance among the members of the non-believer family. Isn't this a big advantage? Yes, yes or no? Yes, it was by practical survey that the level of acceptance among family members and social circles amongst each other, for each other, and the level of tolerance amongst each other and for each other were found to be much better by religion or spiritually inclined minds. Such more than 50,000 research papers have been published in national and international seminars where men, not men of philosophy, but men of science, they have proved by their research, experiments or surveys that how different aspects of religiosity and spirituality makes your life better and definitely gives you a better tomorrow. More than 50,000. I have copies of more than about 5,000 of them. So now it is an increasing fact, a proved fact. Nobody can deny it. That this 8 plus 8 plus 8 lifestyle with the inclusion of spirituality, of course one of the F is faith, it helps you so much in life. So for envisioning a better tomorrow, for a peaceful tomorrow, if I ask you a very simple question today, how many of you want a crime-free world? Just raise your hands if you say yes. How many of you want a crime-free world? All of us. Recently, the founder director of FBI, Edgar Hoover, who was for 40 years at this post, he retired in his farewell ceremony, who's who of US were present. And he was asked, and he became a big emotional, he spoke for three minutes, but it was a wonderful speech. He said, in my experience of 40 years of dealing with crime, and in those 40 years, last 15 years, I dealt with child and teenage crime. He designed rehab programs and rehab centers for those. So well experienced person when it comes to dealing with crime or curbing crime. He said that after my 40 years of experience, I've come to a conclusion and then he asked the audience, how many of you want a crime free world? And everybody raised their hands. And he said that I've come to a conclusion that a child who has been taught to obey the laws of God will find very little difficulty in obeying the laws of man and he becomes a better citizen of tomorrow. That is envisioning tomorrow. So their faith element becomes the mother and gives birth to many values and virtues in your life. From tolerance to acceptance to agreeing to compromise, to adjustments, many values that we need today. Because the biggest problem in the world today is lesser tolerance and lesser acceptance, isn't it? You know the defense budget of the world is $1,500 billion. Today morning I was talking to a, an August audience at a club event in Kandivali, Mumbai. And my subject was towards better living. 
I told them that if the level of tolerances and level of acceptance increases, and that has been proved fact by the University of Miami, University of Philadelphia, University of Pennsylvania, that a spiritual bend of life gives you these values in life. Imagine if the level of acceptance and tolerance among people increases, among nations, it betters, then you can put a good big cut on this $1,500 billion annual defense budget of the world. We need the Army, Navy, and the Air Force to tackle terrorism, to tackle some unrest, or to help people during calamities. But at the same time, if we have better levels of acceptance and tolerance, we can at least stop new R&D of arms. We can at least stop new production of arms. And that means a 50% budget cut. That is $750 billion a year. And if this continues for the next four or five decades, $750 billion if it is pumped, withdrawn from the defense industry and pumped for infrastructure, for social betterness, for health, for education. In the next 50 years, home, clothing, food, Medicare, and education would be absolutely free upon this earth for every citizen. We have enough resources to make all this five free. But those resources to be brought to the optimum and maximum use for the betterment of society and individuals, you have to increase your levels of tolerance and acceptance. To increase that levels of tolerance and acceptance, more than 50,000 research papers by men of science, they say that spirituality is the only way. Because many times jokingly I say that those people who go into the peace summit in the United Nations before entering the meeting hall, their last phone call is an arms deal. It is happening and it happens. And more wars are fought after the installation of the United Nations at the end of the Second World War in 1945 in the last 70 years than in the 200 years before that. So in one way, United Nations has failed because more wars have been fought in 70 years after it than in the 200 years before that. That youth hunt said in 1960, the Secretary General, that the plane of United Nations is flying at a big altitude, high altitude, at a very high speed, but it doesn't have the direction in which it's going. So our peace talks, or our engagements, or our bilateral talks, if it doesn't have the spiritual band of mind and spiritual band of activity, and again I repeat, it has been proved by more than 50,000 research papers, by world-class universities. Only then we can envision a peaceful tomorrow. Because these bombs and missiles are not made by uneducated people. They are made by some of the finest science graduates from some of the finest universities in the world. Do you agree with me or not? Yes. Then where you taught or made double PhD in your physics, chemistry or biology to produce chemical weapons and biological weapons from world class universities? And this top class scientists are working 18 hours a day to produce weapons that can wipe out human population. That means in some aspect, education has failed in envisioning a peaceful tomorrow. Why? They didn't have the touch of spirituality. The scientists had the best scientific minds, but the worst animal minds together as well. So though they don't get the thoughts that being a good scientist, I must use my knowledge, my experience to create some betterment for the society. So a spiritual touch, a spiritual band of life is very much necessary. And lastly, I end. I give you an experiment. A simple experiment I give you. Don't be a good person. Don't be a good person. 
लेकिन थोड़ा एक प्रयत्न करना कि भगवान का नाम स्मरण आप दस मिनट करना जो भी भगवान में आप श्रद्धा रखते हो लाइक यू आई एम ऑल्सो मैन ऑफ साइंस बट ट्वेंटी फाइव ईयर्स ऑफ माई लाइफ एंड अनदर ट्वेंटी फाइव मैन ऑफ स्पिरिचुअलिटी सो आई कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ बर्फ इट इज साइंटिफिकली प्रूव मैं एक आखिरी बात करके मेरी बात पूरी करता हूं अभी यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ फिलाडेल्फिया और पेंसिल्वेनिया में डॉक्टर एच जी कोइंग और डॉक्टर एंड्रू बर्ग एंड्रू न्यू बर्ग ने एक प्रयोग किया दे कॉल्ड अबाउट वन थाउजेंड पीपल इन डिफरेंट एज ग्रुप्स मेड फोर एज ग्रुप्स ऑफ थाउजेंड इंच एंड आज दैन टू चैंड द होली नेम ऑफ गॉड इन विच आर फॉर्म ऑफ गॉड दे बिलीव सिटिंग इन इंडियन पोस्टर यू कैन रीड दिस ऑन द यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ फिलाडेल्फिया एंड यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ पेंसिल्वेनिया वेबसाइट और प्रयोग ये किया and before the start of the experiment their mind mapping and mris were done by special psycho neuro softwares har ek glands ke hormones ke secretion anek prakar ke vichar aur activity mein kis prakar ke hote that was mapped out and then the experiment was done two three four times then they were asked to go back home and repeat the experiment for eight weeks every day and come back after eight weeks they came back they did faithfully because they were part of the subject They are made to sit again in the Indian posture. Four age groups. First age group was four to twelve kids. Second was twelve to twenty-two teenagers and youngsters. Third was twenty-two to sixty working people, and fourth was sixty to eighty the retired or the old age people. Then again, their psycho neuro software mind mapping and MRIs were done by this software. And the conclusion report you can re read on their website. those children who chanted the holy name for 8 weeks every day for 10 minutes they had 15 to 23% increase in their memory power <laughs> scientifically proven hai main sirf an shabda ki baat nahi karta hu hamare shastron mein to shrimad bhagavad gita mein mahabharat mein ye sab baatein likhi hain lekin hum modern hain educated hain forward अपने आप को बोलते हैं दिखाते हैं इसलिए टू बिलीव इन द स्क्रिप्चर्स एंड टू टॉक समथिंग फ्रॉम इट एंड वो जरा ठीक नहीं लगता है लेकिन ये बात सही सेकेंड एज ग्रुप 12 टू 22, 12 टू 22 को ये लाभ मिला कि उनका 15 परसेंट विल पावर एंड कॉन्फिडेंस लेवल बढ़ गया तीसरा जो एज ग्रुप था 22 टू तो 60, उनको ये एडवांटेज मिला देर नाइन टू नाइन टू फिफ्टीन परसेंट राइज इन दर बफर कैपेसिटी That is capacity to absorb shocks of life. Or the last age group tha, 60 to 80. Unko ye advantage mila. They had more than 15 percent rise in their strength of immune system, rok pratikarak shakti mein. To Bhagwan ke naam swaran se ye lab, psycho neuro software says they are proved by top-notch universities. So ye anshadha ki baat nahi hai, sahi hai. So in short, this is 8 plus 8 plus 8 lifestyle, and If you can well live within that lifestyle with a touch of spirituality you can envision a very peaceful tomorrow for us and for the next generation and that is perhaps the biggest gift that you can give to the next generation thank you very much